guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blades. Welcome back to another episode. This is a Storm 2620. It's about, I guess, eight horsepower and 26 wide. That's about the pattern, 524, uh, 724, 826, that kind of thing. Um, as you guys can see from the back uh, background there, We've had kind of a thaw out, okay? While people in Texas were getting belted by a super snowstorm, right? It went up north a little bit to us, and that all we got was a ton of rain last night. And today, it's 50 degrees. It's very comfortable right now, which is why I decided to pull this thing out and uh, work on it in the sun. A lot of the snow is melted. As you can see, there's a little bit of my lawn that you can see now, you know? My friend Mike over at Mike's Lawn Service Babylon, the kid that mows veterans lawns for free, he's been bringing me stuff over the past three years and stuff. Um, this, however, is not that case. As you guys know, I'm a flipper, not a mechanic, right? And I never work on anybody else's stuff, like for repair or anything like that. Uh, I may do some neighbor's uh, equipment because they're my neighbors and they need help, so I'll do it for free. and. Uh, this is Mike's friend's snowblower, and because it's Mike's friend, I agreed to do it. Not to mention the fact that I'm a little low on content right now, because with the snow and all, right, the only thing I have left to fix are a couple of tractors without engines that are buried in the snow in the back. Just want to show you guys really quick. That's fixed. That's fixed. This is good. That's good. This one needs a deck though, but it's really difficult to find a Husker on a deck for this. I believe I have to have a 46 on there, otherwise it wouldn't fit. As you can see, no more snow blowers here except for my collection of uh, Toro power handle equipment, right? This is the uh, power pump, a Snowhound 20, a Snowhound 20. This is a uh, edger. There's the reel mower. There's another power handle with uh, an eight, uh, I'm sorry, a three horsepower engine, but that's parts, right? Then we have my uh, 1742 um, Scots by John Deere that needs an engine. Has a deck under there somewhere. As you can see, my uh, my tent is Dunsky. Made of all the snow. I mean, this is Dunsky. I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. It's my other Snowhound 20 that I just uh, did a video on it actually running and blowing snow. Uh, I want to get rid of all of it. Super cheap. Like a couple hundred bucks for all of it. If anybody, you guys, any of you guys, I know one or two are people are interested, but uh, with the real mower and stuff, I mean, that with this engine running and this Snowhound, you could, you can get, the, you have the Snowhound, the real mower, and the edger working. I mean, you probably need some gaskets to stop it from uh, leaking and maybe a new pet cock, but that's it, you know? Engine seems to run. As you guys uh, are familiar with this area here, I usually have all my snowblowers parked there, and I do not have any. I am sold out of snowblowers. Thanks to the three big storms that we had this year, people are buying snowblowers like crazy. And also I have this uh, carcass of crap. This just needs an engine too and a deck. So that's... That's what I got. Uh, just two lawn tractors that need engines. That's all I need to do. Which is why I agreed to work on this thing. Uh, I don't have anything to do until then, so I got plenty of time now, you know what I mean? So I said I would try to fix it. Um, so he says it doesn't start. And the problem with this is the guy has been in here. He tried to fix it. So he's taken some of these parts off. I haven't worked on this th uh, these types of engines. This is a power more engine uh, from uh, Zhang Shen. It's on uh, most of the MTD engines. Power no more engines is what I call them. Um, and I've only worked on maybe one or two in my entire life. So I'm not, you know, completely proficient in the way that works. But, you know, we'll see what we can find. Uh, another complaint was that it does, the chute does not turn, does not move left and right, okay? This chute here, it doesn't go like this. And also, I think it's supposed to do something with the, uh, the directional here too, which it doesn't do. I don't, I'm not sure if that's powered or not, you know? 
but I don't see a wire that goes there, so I doubt it. So I don't know what this trigger is for. But anyway, the reason why this thing doesn't move left and right is because if you look here, you turn it like this, right? And then you got that thing that moves. Well, this thing that moves, you need some kind of a Torx um, rod that goes from here to there. As you can see, when you move this left and right, that thing moves, see? So you need some kind of rod that goes from here into there. So I says to him, um, it's missing some parts. <laughs> Where's the rod? He's like, I don't know. So the rod's like 30, 40 bucks. <laughs> it's gonna cost you, man. Unless you want me to do a makeshift one, you know, I could probably just find a rod and shove it in there and maybe do a tack weld and, or JB weld and shove it in there. I mean, it's not gonna take too much, uh, too much um, torque to turn this thing unless it's, see, I can turn it with my fingers, you know what I'm saying? So. I don't think it's gonna be that um, hard to come up with something that, that you can jig, you know what I mean? But I don't know if he wants me to jig it. Well, it does kind of click too, so you're gonna need some torque there. So maybe I do need the uh, exact one. We'll figure it out. I'm gonna give you an overview of this. So this Troy built one is a uh, higher model. The reason why it's a higher model is because the normal one is a 2410. 2620 means that it has a wider um, clearing path for the bucket auger and impeller um, two inches more than the uh, starting lineup right this is kind of middle of the lineup uh, with it being a 20 it means that the engine is a bigger engine as well instead of the normal five horsepower one like a 190 or something this is a 208 cc So you have a muffler guard here, the key, there's a um, lever cover over here. This is, I believe is the uh, choke selector. Here's a model number for you enthusiasts. Some corrosion around the belts. It's a recoil starter. It does have electric start. As you can see, it's been taken out to get into here. It's the electric start. It has a stator in it, obviously, because it has a wire that goes to a headlight. Here's the driving auger lock. This is the auger control. It has a couple of shoe pins here and a bag with that stuff that he took off and the bolts, hopefully all of it's there. The speed selector of your transmission gearbox for the drive. Reverse and R2 is always difficult to get into unless you uh, have the engine on. So uh, we're gonna have to take apart this carburetor. Maybe order a new one, as well as either make a rod that connects this to that or get the OEM one. I'm gonna to try to save this kid some money, so I'm gonna to try to make one first. And then if I can't make one, I'll have to buy it. So for today's video, we're just gonna preliminarily see what's wrong with it first. I'm gonna tread lightly on this because I haven't worked on this engine. Uh, I haven't done it much at all. So it will be a kind of a learning process for me as well. Uh, has good clean oil looks like it's a little bit above the full line So I wouldn't be surprised if you're running this thing and some oil would trick out the breather on that side um, It looks like it's completely dry like He said it ran the Gas tank is clean and it's completely empty. Let's feel the compression the Compression feels pretty good and the recoil works. Looks like we might have a strip bolt here too. Right there, see that? Either that's a strip bolt or it's just like 
not in the hole. I have to remove this. Let's get back to this for just a second. As you guys know, in the past couple of episodes, I've been trying to refurbish or revitalize this dead lawn tractor battery. It's a 145 CCA. I've been trying to use a desulfator to uh, rejuvenate it. I don't exa know exactly how it works, but I've seen videos of it done. So this is the third time I have uh, charged this thing overnight. Uh, the other two times I have put the desulfonator on there and it uh, ran out of juice. So right now it's fully charged again for the third time, showing 12.53 volts, okay? Um, it seems to have held it the charge better the second time than the first time. Uh, after the first time, I put the desulfonator on there and it uh, did this, right? 13.5, 13.4, right? And then it'll go to the cell. The cell is 12 volts. Then it'll go to the pulsing. When it uses, it does a cycle and it uses up all the 12 volts that's in here, right? It stops pulsing. And then I'll put the multimeter back on here again. And the first time it showed only three volts left, right? Then the second time I did it, it showed five volts left. So that's a two volt uh, improvement in how it held the charge. So I have a feeling that if I keep doing this, possibly it could hold a charge of 12.5. So that's my hope. We're, I'm just going to keep on doing these uh, recharge and desulfonator um, sessions until this battery holds a charge. Um, I guess that's what, how you do it. You know, I really don't know how it works. It's just a, it's just a computer chip in there that a, a circuit board. I don't know how that could, you know, desulfate a, a, a battery, but uh, I'm, I'm just not sure how it works. Uh, I think Epsom salts or distilled water could be done in there to make it better, but uh, I'm gonna try this first. Shout out to my buddy, Roger McDonald, who donated $25 to the channel. He wanted me. To, he wanted to get the desulfator for me, but he saw my video and he says, "Ah, oh, you beat me to the punch." Thanks a lot, Roger, for the contribution. It's very generous and you're very kind. I always appreciate your loyalty and your subscribership. Uh, also, um, shout out to Aaron Tu, my brother from another mother, another Asian redneck, who uh, donated uh, ten dollars to my channel after I helped him out back to back texting on how to fix his equipment as well. Uh, I'm always willing to lend a hand, and if you donate money to it, even better. So, normally I would try to shoot some carb spray into the mouth of the carburetor and see if it turns over, right? Just to see the status of the engine. But with these engines here, they're all covered up with these shrouds. You simply can't get to it. It even blows, um... You can't even blow anything in there, you know? So it's kind of hard to work on. So... If According to that, it looks like that was the last um, one. This thing here looks like is also on there. And it looks like I have to take... I also have to take this apart to take this off? Wow, that is... That is a royal pain in the... Yum yum. You know, I'm going to try to just take this part off without taking that off because that's just too much trouble, you know? I'm gonna just jar it a little bit. Okay, looks like we have a primer hose thing there. We have a vent tube there. It looks like I can just remove this. this. Guy's done a decent job removing all this stuff just so that you can actually see. There's a wire here, electrical wire that's connected to the switch. I could take this off and make it a little easier for myself. I believe it's just those two right there. If I remove those two right there, let's remember how, how it goes, okay? Blue on the left, black on the right. There you go. Nope, oh, it's still connected. Nope, I can do it. I can do it. There we go. Remember, this goes under there. I know I'm going to forget this. So this entire panel comes off. Let 
Man, oh man, all the linkages are taken out already. I don't know how that went. That's what it looks like. Gasket looks okay. I remember uh, Mike telling me that it needs new gaskets. That seems to be okay, actually. Notice this, how the two studs, this is lower than this one. This one's way higher, right? Guess I'm gonna remove the, I was gonna just blow some um, go-go juice in here and see if it starts up, but it's not sealed properly because it needs to have the bolt on here to keep it down, you know? So I'm just gonna remove the whole carburetor and see what we find on the inside. I'm gonna take the fuel line off of this side of the carburetor, loosen the small um, wire there, as, long, uh, as well as the throttle linkage, and get this carburetor off and we can take a better look at it. Take the hose clamp off. There's no gas in it, so I don't have to block it off. Let's wiggle this a little. Care of that in a minute. Got some needle nose. Pull this off. I turn this all the way. That comes off like that. And I do have to remove this. There we go. Took some doing. And there be the carburetor. He said he needed gaskets, but honestly, there's nothing wrong with these gaskets. You could tell that this was left outside. It's all rusted. This is supposed to click, but it's uh, hard to move to get it to click for the choke flap. This gasket over here looks good too. So I don't think you need gaskets. Let's take this bowl off and see what happens. Um, they're all 10 millimeter bolts or nuts or screws. There's the uh, bowl nut. It has no jet in it. It's just a bowl nut with a gasket. And here we go. Let's take a look. Get that, huh? Yucky. There's a pile of... Here. What is that? It's almost like crystalline dust. This thing hasn't been used in a while. <laughs> it was running! Uh-huh. When? Ten years ago? Evidence shows this is, was not running for a long time. That's the evidence. Uh-huh. The needle is stuck in there. It's not moving, see? Let's try to remove the bowl, uh, the float. Let's try not to break it. I am infamous for breaking these, though. Yep. Yep. It's going to take a bit to get this uh, pin out without breaking the posts. But as you can see, I'm moving the float and the needle is not moving, which means that the needle is stuck in there from all this corrosion, uh, old ethanol buildup, dried gum. But I think this carburetor could be fixed or cleaned without buying it. If I could do that, save the kids some money, that will be worth it. I'll put some penetrating oil on this thing. Got some contact cleaner from my friends over at Lucas Oil Products. Same thing as carb cleaner. I'm just gonna shoot some there. Just let it uh, soak and get some of that corrosion maybe out of there, you know? Maybe soak the where the needle goes into the carburetor, where it seats. Just clear it up a little bit. And I'm gonna use some penetrating oil 
from my friends over at Look at All Parts. We'll let that soak a little bit too. This is going to be a uh, multi-episode, multiple part episode, because I'm showing you every step I make. I'll be watching you. I'll let it soak for a bit. It's been soaking for a while and look what I got it to do. It starts to move. There we go. Success. And also, the needle move too. So there we go. Got the needle and the float out. And this needle looks rounded. See how it's been compacted in there for a while? It's no longer like a cone. So unfortunately, I'm going to need a new needle. And if I'm going to go out and buy a rebuild kit to get the needle, right? Might as well just buy a new carburetor. I think a new carburetor is 18 for this. So we're just going to get a new carburetor because uh, I don't. I know I don't have another needle for this, see? So if I don't have another needle for this, I have to go get a... Uh, to buy a new needle, you have to buy the rebuild kit. Rebuild kit's like $12. Might as well spend another four or five dollars on there and get a whole new carburetor so you don't have to mess with it you know not to mention this looks like it's all rusted up on the inside so that would take a lot of work so that's the reason i said that this was going to be a multi-part episode is because there's no way i have parts for this thing which means i have to order them and wait for it in addition he also brought me this uh ryobi weed whacker with the edger attachment onto it it's seized on the recoil starter tried pulling it and it just uh sat out there like that i bet you it's all rusted in the shaft over here so i don't know what i'm going to do with this i found this rod in my box of parts i don't know where it's from but it was the only rod that was long enough to reach from here to there however the diameter of the inner part is too small it's not going to work because even if I was able to shove this into here, it's not that shape of the hex, you know, and you couldn't put a bolt in there because it's too thick. So this would just turn like that. And I believe this is rubber or plastic. So if I did anything like that, it would, it would probably strip and break. So I think the only way we can get the shoot direction to work so if I ordered the $30 part, what could I do? It's uh, too difficult to fabricate because of the plastic attachment here, you know? If this was metal, it might be easier because I could just do a spot weld as well as this, but then you wouldn't be able to take it apart again, you know, it'd be permanent, you know? So I'm gonna go and order the rod, the shoot rod that goes into there as well as a new carburetor. As you can see, it does take a little bit of um, torque to turn it because there's a click mechanism here. Turn it, it clicks. So it's not like super easy, you know what I mean? There's a click in there so that it doesn't, it stays into that place without it moving. So it does take a little bit of twisting pressure to turn it is why you can't really do a makeshift one. It has to fit perfectly, otherwise it won't work. Okay, so it takes a little bit of pressure just to turn it. So I was just messing with this carburetor just to see maybe I could get it to work, whatever. But, uh, so I tried to remove the inner emulsion jet, the main jet, stripped it, wouldn't come out, and also, there was so much rust buildup and, and that crystalline stuff that it got stuck into the thing. I can't even I can't even put my uh, torch tip cleaner in there. It's all jammed up. It's completely jammed up in there, solid. Because I tried to blow fluid in there and you couldn't see it out of the emulsion tube. You couldn't see it coming back out there. So this um, 
This emulsion tube is completely clogged up with uh, stuff in it. It's, it's rare. I, I've never seen that, you know? So this carburetor is Donsky. This carburetor is definitely Donsky. Too bad, too. Do you guys want to see something? What do you see? I found a carburetor in my box of carburetors. It's identical to the one that I need. And if you flip it over here, 17 OSA, 17 OSA. It's the exact carburetor that I need. What are the damn chances? I looked in there because I was looking at this carburetor. I'm like, it does look familiar. I think I might have one. So I went and dug in there, and sure enough, I found a carburetor that looks just like it. Made by Hua Yi. I don't have the gaskets for it, but I'll just take these gaskets off of it. Because these gaskets are still good. Let me take this bowl off and see the condition of this carburetor. Let's see how dirty or clean it is. Nice. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, blow through some of these holes. I guess I'm going to try and install it and see if it works, you know? That'll probably save a little bit of money for uh, Mike's friend. As you can see from this one, when you blow through the emulsion tube, it goes all the way through. The other one was stopped up. There's a pilot jet in there. I'm going to take that out. It's clear, but it looks like it had some it has some gunk in there. I'm gonna stick a Q-tip into that hole just to get the sides. Okay, I cleaned this carburetor pretty good. It wasn't dirty, I mean, much, you know? I feel pretty good about it. It's amazing that I found the same carburetor, though. I'm gonna take the gaskets off the old one, put it onto the <laughs> quote-unquote new one, and uh, put it on. See what happens. <laughs> So I put that carburetor back in, and if you take a look here, the shorter stud on the right-hand side, two studs that hold the carburetor onto the engine block, it doesn't protrude outwards. I remember that Tyrell was doing something like this, and he had a difficult time as well with this stud. 
but I really tightened this one on here and uh, we'll, I, I doubt it'll work because if this is not super tight, there's some kind of a, um, a vacuum leak somewhere. It, the, the carburetor is not exactly on there, but I just put some gas in there. Just gonna prime it. It's on choke. I think I put this on correctly, clicks as it should. So that's choke, put the key back in. The lever is still here onto um, grab it. I didn't put it on yet, I just used my fingers. But it, I don't know, sort of feel like it might work. Let's give it a couple of cranks and see if it uh, fires up, huh? I, I don't feel any fluid going in there. It just doesn't feel right. I don't know, either way, let's uh, give her a few cranks. So it only runs on choke. I have a feeling it's because the carburetor is not exactly uh, sitting on the um, engine block because of the lack of tightening that second right side bolt. I'm gonna have to tear it apart again and... So the reason why this is not, the carburetor doesn't go all the way on is because this second bolt is not just short for a reason. It is shorter, as you can see, thread stops there right and it's about a half inch shorter than the one on the left right but rather this second bolt is broken see the piece is broken off as you can see the length of this is about um, a little more than half an inch probably three quarters of an inch long the threads and you can only see maybe a half inch left here so as you can see this is broken off so I have to replace this stud I don't, that's going to be difficult to do, but I'll go look in my uh, box of parts. I'm going to have to take this carburetor back off again. So to remove this stud, I have to turn the stud counterclockwise. So I put a uh, 10 millimeter stop nut inside along with tightening another one on the outside. So then I'll move it to the, move this wrench to the inside if I can. I have to line it up exactly perfectly to that one. And there we go. Now let's see if we can turn this counterclockwise and turn the stud. And it looks like it's turning. And this is how you remove the stud without stripping it. Looks like it's working. Now the um, challenge, of course, is to find a stud exactly the same as this one. I might have to order that too. But I have a lot of nuts and bolts. I'm sure I could find one that's about the same size. All right, making some progress. 
So now it's loose enough that I could hand loosen it. And then uh, I guess it's off to my uh, nuts and bolts bin. See if I can find one long enough or similar enough with the right threads that'll go in here. And then we'll be able to tighten the carburetor to the engine manifold. And hopefully that carburetor will work correctly. There it is. So that doesn't look too tough. I bet you I can find one that's about that size. Probably easier this way to find it than the other way. So you can just tell from this mishmash that you're not going to find anything close to that. The only other thing was this one here, but this one's not going to work because this stud is not going to go through the uh, ends of the carburetor because of this grooves on the inside, you know, and not to mention it's not long enough either. So, um, I mean, look, I would know if I had one of these in there because it would require this much effort to get this out. So I don't recall ever doing that, you know, so I know I don't have it. Uh, looks like I might have to um, buy this part, you know, if it's available. But because this is a power more engine, the only other power more engines I've had are the 420cc lawn tractor power more engines. So I'm going to go in a back shed and look in the power more engine boxes to see maybe they might have something similar to this. That's my only shot. Otherwise, I have to buy this part. This is not going to be pretty. Ooh, that wasn't bad. Look. Only a washer flew off. Skills, man! So no dice. I couldn't find one from the power no more. But I did find one similar on a uh, Kohler X, XT675 head. Remove the stud just like I did this one. It only is slightly longer. That little bit there could make a difference. But if I don't put this all the way in, that'll give me some more stud to secure it on there. So I'm gonna try it. So I got it in here. I put another 716 bolt in there just to hold it in there. I think it's pretty tight. I'm gonna try the electric start. Plug in the electric start, see if it works. So the carburetor is dirty. There's a hole on there's a hole that's plugged somewhere. So while I have the stud correctly on here, uh, even though it's not original, um, it does start up on choke only. So the carburetor is still hinky. Took the carburetor apart again. Just took out the main jet. I'm gonna clean up these holes. Uh, also, I got the pilot jet little hole on the top too. So maybe that was it. I'm not sure. But um, I really know how to take this apart now. I've done it like eight times already. <laughs> so here's the main jet. Look when I stick the uh, pin in there. While it did go through there, right? Look at the amount of corrosion dust that's coming out of the hole so while the hole was clear it does have a lot of corrosion see this was a clean needle before 
Now you stick it in there. It's got all this chalky residue in there, you know. This one goes all the way through too. But as you can see, when I poke the needle through the hole, there's some chalky residue in there. This is a pain in the ass, you know what I mean? That's why it's not even worth it to clean it because you could just go buy one for 18. But this is OEM. <laughs> OEM Chinese made. Just the same thing as a copied Chinese made carburetor. But uh, there's something said to be, you know, factory OEM to the machine, you know, as opposed to uh, the copy. So look, as you can see, when I clear the holes, right, there's a white chalky residue that's around the hole, which means that I'm I'm clearing it out some somewhat. There's something that's coming out from the sides here. So I don't know if that's gonna make too much of a difference, but so yeah, as you can see, there's some dust that comes out of it, you know? So that's definitely blocking somehow. So I'm just gonna do this, clean it up, put it back together again, give it a try. If not, if it still doesn't work right, I don't know, man. I think it just has to do with um, that stud, you know, I might have to order a new stud because the stud just it isn't all the way in, you know what I mean? Um, I just put some Loctite on there to see, uh, maybe it might work out better, but we'll see. It's a work in progress. I have cleaned that carburetor thoroughly and I put it back the eighth time. Choke, prime, let's give it a try. Let's see if it stays running on run and not just choke. No, no it doesn't run at all. Let's put it to middle. me all afternoon but so far so good man uh found a carburetor in my drawer look new you know so i didn't have to unfortunately it's still gonna take at least a week or so for me to order uh the rod so that the chute can move so how about it fabricated a stud uh loctited it out a little bit so that it's uh, it's sticking out more than I need you know or as much as I need and uh, didn't have to order the stud because I fabricated something to make it work you know and uh, gaskets were good cleaned that carburetor like three times but took the main jet out and cleaned out the little holes and uh, that was the culprit it was uh, corrosion that was in the, the air the main jet with the little tiny pinholes just getting through every hole 
blowing it out with some carburetor cleaner to get that varnish and corrosion out of there makes a big difference, you know, obviously, because now it, it, it uh, starts on choke, runs on run, you know, before it would only run on choke and that's it. The minute you turn it, click it to the middle, it would stall. So uh, pilot jet, main jet, all that was cleaned out. That was the culprit. Um, gaskets were good, tightened it uh, real nice with the uh, stud that I fabricated. And uh, all we need now is that is that rod. So pretty cool. I mean, I, I worked on this for two, three hours. Um, but you know what? It's it's a learning experience for me because I haven't really worked on these power bore engines too much. You know, I, I always make fun of power no more engines, but honestly, it sounds okay. You know, light always comes on, and uh, I'm pretty satisfied. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me on today's long episode of swapping out a carburetor, cleaning the carburetor, fabricating the uh, carburetor mounting studs. And we got this baby running. I'm gonna put the rest of this stuff back. You know, this needs to be on there. Just a bunch of screws, levers, little things on top of the hand, levers and stuff like that. I'll put, put all that back and I'll order the rod. Cool, cool. It's very satisfying to get it going. You know what I mean? Uh, I, I don't know how long I would have kept on trying to do it without ordering a carburetor, but uh, you know, just keep trying, keep trying. Eventually you, you're gonna know you missed a hole somewhere and sure enough, you get all the holes, it'll run just fine. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, Remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowersandblowers really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.